Hello and welcome. We are back to this beautiful podcast with the signs and the voices of New Earth. And I feel very privileged and very honored and excited to be today with, I want to say, my dear friend, Jackie Scully, who has so much to share about these signs that she has experienced and about the voice she brings today into New Earth. So Jackie, tell us a little bit about you. What brings you here today in this energy of sharing, in this energy of the new earth and the signs that you're experiencing and the voice that you are ready to be? Thank you so much for sharing this space with me. It's such an honor that you reached out and said, you know, I'm ready to have this conversation on my show with you. And I love this form of media because I think like this is how we're getting our messages out there. So a little bit about me is I am, well, I'll, I'll start with my astrology, which I never do because I think I've been tapping into it more. I am a uh, sun cancer and a moon Leo, water and fire. And so I often have been saying recently, I am a volcano. <laughs> and I feel like that is what I'm kind of really embodying this summer is I'm I'm birthing this new life of what I am, but what I am in this collective and the energy and the waters are there, like the emotions. And so really kind of bringing that fire up um, to the surface. And so I'm going through quite a transformation and definitely tapping into these signs and these energies. And it's been quite exciting. Um, now, traditional identity of who's Jackie Scully, teacher for many years, taught psychology, and in a pivot now to move away from classroom teaching in like the traditional sense and still teaching, you know, in this new way of making videos, sending messages, kind of tapping into um, being this like speaker about these energies and messages that I'm receiving. And I see so many, and I think that's why we connect it. So yeah, that's kind of me in a kind of astrology way and also a kind of traditional way. Yeah, I find it very, very interesting how in this whole new energy, in this whole new earth vibration, we're realizing we don't need an identity. You know, this is a trap and this is that, that, that sense of detachment only when we can let go we come into our topic today of trust, but more than that, mm. this is where we evolve and this is where we understand the messages at the, and the signs and being able to be a voice, a speaker, a teacher, whatever we are guided to do. And so I find also interesting that you brought in astrology. I'm on the cast between Gemini and Cancer. My ascendant is Leo and my moon is in Gemini. So it's interesting how, again, here the water and the fire really comes together without identifying because astrology actually does not identify us. It's not really predicted. It, it gives us an opportunity to evolve and dance with the energy. So I find that very interesting. And I feel in general, and this brings us to trust, this year you have started trusting and that's where we started connecting again i did a post on trust and you did one and we go like we're in this together yeah absolutely i love the synchronicity absolutely in the same window of time and just as like we are tapping into that energy and so many people like will respond to my videos just i'm sure with your posts like i'm feeling that too so it just even it makes us feel even more connected it's the proof of that connection. Yes, and the proof is no longer the science behind it. It's no longer the facts that we thought that we had. It is that trust. And I almost want to say it comes from the heart because it's not mind-based. And I always used to say I have unwavering trust. But I don't talk much about it. And now, mm -hmm. as you said, as we're tapping into these energies, which are the signs and the messages, we're actually starting to come together. And this is what you're saying as well. So it's that trust in, hey, there's a message. Hey, I want to share it. And look, everybody understands it. 
So give us an example of one of these messages that you have received recently shared and people say like, wow, this is exactly what it is. This is, I'm in the same energy field. Share one with us. Yeah. So the one that I posted about trust and how we connect it, um, I have to go through it emotionally myself first before I'm ready to, I guess, receive this message. Um, so I was going through my own self trust, um, of my transition and my transformation this summer and feeling, wow, so many people in my life are showing me that trust, like mirrors everywhere. So I was seeing those signs and I call these people, my earth angels, and I have many of them and I'm so, so blessed. So, so blessed. And I was journaling. So that's been a really good method for me to um, really understand what's going on and coming through me. And I'm journaling and I'm like, oh my gosh, all of these earth angels are showing me that I have this trust and that I really need to continue to feel that and feel that energy. So then I go on a walk in nature in my neighborhood and I have this energy moving through me. I hit record on my phone and I just record a video and it just flows and it comes out of me. And I, I want to feel like it's kind of a channeled message. I'm tapping into higher self, something, the collective. Um, and I've had collective energy move through me before when I've had like deep meditations, I've actually felt the collective energy of grief or sadness or something that's really hard move through me than I actually express that emotion. So it just comes through and there isn't that like the ego is away. Like I just drop the ego and whatever moves through me, I don't think about how I'm saying it. I don't think about the strategy of how to say certain words or, you know, it's not oratory in that way. Um, it's just an energy. And then it's done when it's done. And then I know it's done. And then I give my love to everyone. And then I share that. And I've had people then respond saying, that's exactly what I needed to hear or what I was feeling this week. And I'm like, I was feeling it too. And it is that like new earth energy of we are tapping into each other. We are almost like being telepathic or I don't even know what the word would be with like tele emotions like we're we're feeling those emotions at the same time and using technology to share those messages and then that becomes that proof like you said science and the facts is not our proof but the proof of wow other people are feeling the same energy and i feel so connected and i think that's when we're healing we're helping each other heal and we're helping the earth heal and we're helping the collective heal and we're raising that vibration because it's showing everyone that we truly are in this together. Like we are not separated. We are not divided. The powers that be that want to keep branding that message, they're doing it for a reason, right? Because when they're branding this message of division, it's easier for them to stay in their powerful positions. And there is a rise of the masses of the collective saying, no, that's not true. What's true is we feel this together. And so I have an, an, a message coming out. My next one that I did this week is on truth and on your truth and really diving into that. But yeah, you have to always go back to trust because you have to trust that this is happening for a reason. We're feeling this. We are aligning with certain individuals and it will be more and more and more for a reason. And you just have to go with it. It's like a, you know, this flow state. Yeah. Yeah. You put so much richness into this sharing with us. And I really want to emphasize some of these really important points. I feel nature is, is our complice. Nature is our part of making this happen. It allows us to tap into this collective energy. But in this collective energy, it's like for me, symbolically or metaphorically, we become keys that open up that space even more. And all that you're saying brings that to me. And it starts with awareness. 
And I feel in nature is the best place to get aware. It is like a meditation because we are entering this higher collective field that they call maybe 5D, 6D, 7D, whatever they want to call it. It's not even about the name, but just the way you are bringing that through and how trust came in and how you are seeing now, and this is awareness again, how this trust is everywhere. It's in nature. And, and, and the other thing that I really want to emphasize and want to for all of us to experience what you're sharing with us, we are not separated. We are together. And I, for me too, the best way to do that is in nature. I mean, I'm looking out in nature. I'm living kind of in nature. I do most of my videos in the hammock. But this nature that we're feeling when you're on this walk and you press the record button, I feel nature is really our friend here, our ally, to allow this energy to connect now to come out. And I want to take another second treasure out of your beautiful sharing, Jackie emotions this is beyond emotional intelligence you know mm -hmm. yes and of course as humans and you know i believe in the evolution from homo sapiens to homo luminous i feel the emotions are no longer our positive and negative expression mm -hmm. they're no longer that roller coaster that we are on i feel our emotions become our treasure and friend again mm -hmm. It's that feeling, that sensing, that being able to connect through emotions that is powerful. It's also divine feminine, of course. As you kind of saying, you know, it's like mentally we can separate easily. But actually, truly in the heart and the emotion of the human and the heart of the higher self or whatever we want to call it, there is no separation. Because all the people that are now checking in on your posts, on your words, on your truth. They can feel it. Mm -hmm. And this for me is new earth. Yes. Thank you for, for bringing this to us. And it's funny. I have the same thing. Often the words that begin with the same letter come in a sequence. So you have first the trust and you have the truth. But what is the truth? Does anybody really know what's the truth? So tell us a little bit. How do mm. you know the truth? You talk about the inner truth. How do you know it's your truth? Yes, thank you so much. Oh, I'm just like lit up by all this sharing. And um, before I talk about truth, I want to go back to emotions because that's really been a big part of my messaging. Um, being a cancer, <laughs> just to have the astrology label and I was a very emotional child and I hid my emotions for a really long time but I get what you're saying like it's it's so much more powerful than just the negative or the the positive or just that's what people you can't just stay in I just want to feel good and if I just feel good and put positivity out there then I'm going to receive that that's spiritual bypassing again another kind of term in that world is no you have to feel it all because it's all you and it's all an experience and it's a powerful energy and we have this hard exchange whether they are you know emotions that feel difficult you know especially in our mind or they're joyful emotions they're not just you know I want the light only and not the shadow that was one of my first videos it's all of it it is everything is part of who we are and part of being you know, this living entity in this, you know, world. And so I really want to try to keep talking about that. Like, I think that's a huge new earth type of concept is it's not just like, let's talk about our feelings to so talk about our feelings, you know, SEL, EQ in schools, but really like it is an energy that is so powerful. It brings you a lot of information. It does allow you to connect with people. I think you can connect with people all over the world through that heart exchange. So, you know, there might be that next level of what's after the internet, right? And everyone was talking about the metaverse like a, a year or two ago. It, it's really, I think that heart exchange that we're gonna feel it. Um, so yeah, that's becoming kind of part of my messaging. And this is my truth. Like your inner truth is 
your pure essence. It's, it's what you are. It's why you were created. It's why you're here right now is to be in that truth, in that essence. And it's not your truth of this is my politics. This is my um, education. This is, you know, my truth in that, right? Those are all like opinions and they all move like waves, you know, politics I've had, things I thought were truths in history, education, that's ebbing and flowing all the time. But my truth, my inner truth, my essence is what I'm now sharing in these videos and into the world is that I truly have this belief that we are all connected. We are connected to other higher dimensions and beings, and we are getting a lot of information that way. And we should express it and we should be excited about it. We should be singing, you know, from the rooftops about it, not hiding it anymore. So when I talked about truth in my video, I'm going to have out later is that we need to stop hiding that there's, there's no reason to hide. There's so many people now becoming more aware. You talked about awareness and awakened to the sense that this is real and we want to just be ourselves and we're all helping each other tap into that intuitive truth is like what I call it is that it's more than your intuition. Like your intuition is your compass. It's kind of guiding you to get to that intuitive truth. And then that is who you are and what you're meant to be in this world, your service. It's what you give to others. So if we aren't truthful with ourselves, then how can we be a service? We really can't, you know, because, and I'm finding I'm getting a lot more signs like you are talking about that are coming in as a test or a trigger, right? Like something that's supposed to like be like, working you up and being like, okay, what's that? And these tests that have been coming in recently are basically signaling, are you going to be in your truth? Or are you going to settle for less? Are you going to do something just because, yeah, I need a job right now. I, I need this right now. I, I want this experience. Um, or are you going to come back to your truth? And every time I come back to that truth, I feel even more empowered. I feel even more guided and closer to what is my authentic service. And so that's really what it is. Like, you know, get out of the, the whole mindset of, again, truths of knowledge, politics, how you see the world, but go back to what feels truthful to you. And your emotions are part of that. So when you're feeling a certain energy, a certain emotion, and it feels so true, don't ignore that because that is getting you to alignment to that truth, which is getting you to alignment to your service, to others and to the world. And then that is how you're living purposefully in this life. And it's, it's all like a recipe. Like it all makes sense. Like the trust and the truth and the emotions and the heart, it's all this beautiful recipe. And when you put it all together, it's like, that is your essence. That's why you're here. Yeah, I just love how you say that and bring at the end the recipe. I love the metaphor of the recipe as well, because these are, this is a beautiful um, metaphor for putting ingredients that allow us to be who we truly are. And I really love how you made it so clear. The only way we can live in that truth that we don't know, because it is unknown to us in many ways, and it will still be unfolding, is not done yet. You don't know what you're going to do with that truth next year. But what you need is that faith, that truth, that trust and that belief in it. And for that, I feel we need emotions and we also need that spiritual mystic awareness to understand we came here as a spiritual being in a, in a human experience. And we came at a time of evolution and ascension and whatever uh, the word we want to use. And I love how you bring the key of emotions and beyond emotional intelligence. When I studied emotional intelligence, I got controlling emotions, <laughs> managing others' emotions. And I'm going like, no. I know. <laughs> Why are we doing that? 
why you're doing that. But these are coping mechanisms that we are learning. But what are coping mechanisms doing? They are covering up the fight, the flight, the fear, the fawn, and the freeze. And as we liberate our emotions, and of course you and I can talk about that because we're living it, it's our truth and we have embodied it, then things actually get easy and the signs are coming, as you're saying. The more we're stepping into that trust of trusting the truth and make the leap of faith, evolutionary leap, again, whatever word suits us, it is happening. And, and what you brought in as well, and I want to emphasize on that again, it's an alignment. If it's not your truth, if you're not synced, it's actually not working because then it's not truth. Truth is not absolute. And I studied enough philosophy to talk about this, I guess, and taught philosophy too. But I feel it is not the truth that needs to be mentally justified or debated or even discuss to convince somebody that this is true. It's the truth that is aligned to nature, that's aligned to me, that's in harmony, that's in love, that's collective. And I love how you're bringing that through in your such unique and, and authentic way. And I, I, I love these voices as they're coming up, Jackie. And, and I really love how you stepped out this year, this summer, you stepped into your truth, into that alignment of who you truly are. And with that, you're bringing so much inspiration. We need to have these signs. We need to have these wake-up calls. And yes, they are tests. Not always easy. But they are here to allow us to be that voice of encouragement, of support, of truth and trust. Because if we can do it, all can do it. Because we are in that field, that collective field of awakening, evolution together. Yeah, so it's so beautiful mm -hmm. how you are expressing that. I really, I really love your your ability to to share with us from your own experience, but yet from your own unfolding, you're not holding on to your old. I feel you build a foundation on your possibilities and potential. Mm. And now you're just shining like a bright light out there. <laughs> ah, thank you. Oh, I love that you have a background in philosophy and of course psychology as you were talking about that because that is like always was my favorite subjects. And I never got a chance to teach philosophy, but I did study it in college and I taught psychology for many years. So I think a lot of that, probably the reasons we went into those areas of like humanities, um, again, these are all the boxes and the titles, but, but it is part of our kind of soul path to get us to this point. Cause I kind of fell into psychology. I always taught history and then a school took a chance on me. I had no psychology background besides like a little bit in my um, classes that I took in my bachelor's degree, but I never taught it. It was like a advanced course. And they're like, well, we really like you. So I think you're going to be able to do it. And, and then it just took me down this road of psychology and teaching. It got me onto this path of like, I want to know more. I'm curious. Like, I want to know more about like spirituality. Like there, there's always these through lines, you know, like it could start off with something. So like that 3d in a box subject, but then it's like bringing you closer to what we're talking about here. And I just had this um, quote or idea in mind that came from a spiritual um, like medium and leader that I follow and went to a spiritual retreat last June. And it was something like, it's not about the story. We need to move away from the story. It's about getting to the moral. And I'm like, oh, that is so profound because the story are the boxes. It's the truths we think in history, the truths we think in politics, our own story. And I, I wrote my own story in my book, The Guided Teacher, because I think I needed to do that to then move away from the story because now I'm I'm not in a story. Like I'm actually, 
I'm in a space of my essence because I don't have an identity at this moment of a job or where I'm going to the next job. Um, and I believe, I truly believe God, divine, and I really believe in divine feminine is definitely here and present right now, um, is <laughs> keeping me kind of in this space, in this time um, to, to be in that, that moral. And the moral is like your truth, right? It is the whole purpose of why you're here and your essence. So it's funny because I just was reading back through some previous journals from last summer and that was written <laughs> and that just popped in my head as you were talking. I'm like, this is now making so much sense. So as we're actually talking, I'm having more awareness there are things that were on my path as these little like breadcrumbs. And now I'm having a conversation with you and they're like, oh, that that's what that means. That makes so much sense. And that's the whole, the whole point of this, you know, where we're going in the new earth is like, we're having conversations and we're having more awakenings. We're having, you know, looking at media and videos and we're having more awakenings and it just gets deeper and deeper and deeper. And the idea that you brought up that like your truth now is your truth now, but you don't know where that's going oh. next year, years to come. And that is also the the purpose of being here is like that you just keep evolving. You keep going. You never get to that, just the top of the mountain. And then that's it. It's kind of like in uh, psychology, Maslow's hierarchy, that pyramid, I would always tell my students, you don't just like get to self actualization or self-transcendence and you're like, good, I'm good now. You know, like even our greatest, um, you know, spiritual like gurus and masters in, in history. And now like, you don't just get to this top and they're like, okay, good. I'm enlightened. I know everything I'm ready to go. <laughs> it's you're constantly evolving even on the other side. Exactly. And I believe when souls pass, and especially people who can tap into that, they're still healing and growing on the other side too, oh. you know? And yeah, so it's, 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 and that's why I don't believe like death isn't an end game, you know, it's just, a, it's a closing of this experience. Yes. And then you're on the other side, that's the unknown. And there's more truths on that side. And then you continue to evolve you continue to find more truth. And I think having these conversations could also make it a little less scary to um, think about death or talk about death. And I didn't know I was going to go in that direction today, but here we are. <laughs> yes, because it has to do with trust, you know, for like 4,000 years and astrology shares that with us and many other philosophies and ever. We were living in that fear of death we created stories to have, let me call it a fake security that didn't exist, a fake identity, an identity trap. We went into boxes to feel safe. And really, we are here to break those boxes. We are here to break the stories. When I was on my shamanic training, the, one of the first things you do is you, you let go and you to break your old stories. You know, so it, it is very interesting how this is all coming together. And, and death, too, it's not it's not the end at all, because before 4000 years ago, people believed in about a birth, a life, a death and a rebirth. We have let go the rebirth and the reincarnation and the multidimensionality in these last 4000 years. But this is not who we are. There are things we can experience in a physical body, in a human experience, and there's things we can experience and explore and heal and learn and unlearn in a non-physical body. And I, I like that we go there because there is no evidence of that in a logical, factual way. And yet, I believe it so much I don't have any doubt. I trust that. I guess I've always been mystic. I've never I've never fitted into the boxes and yet I had to break them because we all go through that. 
So I'm, I really love that you bring that up. It takes that trust and that, that belief, maybe what I've been taught, maybe what was in these boxes, maybe the story. It's not about if it's true or not, because who am I to judge? It's just like, I can't break it. Maybe it's not me. Maybe I, it's time for me to evolve. And in order to evolve, I need to break it. And break is also not bad. Mm -hmm. It's just opening up another space. It's like when a turtle comes out of the shell, you know, when we go to the beach, you know, these little turtles come out of the shell or, or many, many other animals obviously come out of a shell. It's magic, right? And I feel so the, the breaking and breaking stories and boxes is not necessarily bad. And also, of course, our concept, when we start integrating the facts with the trust and the belief and the truth that resides in here. Absolutely beautiful. We have more things in yeah. common that we knew. I, I started <laughs> teaching without having anything. And they said, we just trust you. Isn't that funny? Mm, yes. And yes, I thought I trust things, but, but for me, it was so important. Like for you, it was such an amazing foundation because it didn't limit me. I trusted and it all came to me. I tapped yeah. into all this knowledge and all this wisdom and all this truth. I tapped into it like you and I are tapping in today to these new new truth that are unfolding as we are just speaking because we're trusting it so the trust is mm. in a way what gives you access yeah without control I was, I was just thinking when you're saying that and it's so cool that we have like that same kind of story story um of people trusting in us and saying i just might not be on your resume you might not have done that but i trust that you can do that and then that felt like, okay, that's my, my next path. But I think we do have some evidence of death is a good thing. And it's not scary because we die so many times in our one human life here. And now again, I'm having awareness and awakening as you're speaking. Um, why I know this is like why we were meant to have this conversation today is that my dad always said this, and I wrote this in my book. He's like, you're like a cat in a tree and you fall out and you land on your feet somehow, but you just keep getting back in that tree. I'm like, well, I think my soul like wanted me to have many, many deaths, you know, because I, I never wanted to stay complacent in anything. And when that journey was over, I felt a moving in my soul to say, okay, that is done. I'm going to leave that be. I'm, that's a death and I'm going to go through this transition into the unknown and I'm going to start again. And I've done that probably at least four or five times in my life from various careers and just moving around a lot. And, you know, I'm 42 years old, so it's been kind of frequent up to, to this point. And, um, to someone on the outside, that'd be like, wow, she just moves around a lot or changes up things a lot. <laughs> and it's like, no, it's like my soul is like, that's done now. That's going to die. And I'm going to go through a transformation and I'm going to move on to the next thing. And then you just know when it's the right thing, because when I got that first psychology job, yeah. um, it just was like magic. It just happened. There was so much trust. There was so much trust for that principal to hire me. There was so much trust that I had for it was a school I've never been in a private all girl Catholic school before. And it just felt so right. And so going back to like that intuitive truth, that was like, this is meant to be. Yes. And there was a lot of transformation that had to happen. And that was just like a very kind of small sign of, you know, going through that death, that transformation and that rebirth. Um, and this, what I'm going through this summer is like, a much more expansive death and transformation and rebirth because it's going to happen again many times in this human experience. And then it's going to happen as we die and move into other experiences. So it's like, if we think of it just as experiences. Exactly. Life is an experience. Yeah. You have a choice how aware you are of this experience. 
and how big your trust is to have something amazing or not. Yeah, exactly. I want to close it, not because I want to close our conversation, but I think for today we've given enough curiosity and sparks and voices and signs of trust. And I actually want to put out there, you know, if you're not a cat, it doesn't matter, but climb up that tree again. And maybe it's another tree you're climbing. It's maybe not the same one. And I feel it's just really important to trust in life and to die to something, to break to something and to trust into the unknown and the unfolding so we can be connected in that beautiful field of consciousness that we were talking mm. about at the very beginning. And I want to give you the last word about that field of consciousness that we are all meeting in. What would you like to put into this field of consciousness with your voice of trust? Jackie, share with Thank me. you so much. This is such a beautiful sharing. Um, well, we are all in this one consciousness. We are all connected and we are all going through this experience together. We are a family. And there's going to be times that are really rough. And there's going to be some people in this family that were like, oh man, this is, this, I don't know about this person, but we are in it together. So the truth is we are connected and we are living a very similar experience. And we're going through that. And the more that we see that connection, that's actually where you have more trust, more truth, more love. And that's what I keep going back to. And then I see it. And then I see it in my reality. And it, it deepens that trust. It deepens my love because I see the connection. It's a really beautiful, beautiful thing that we're all just in this consciousness together. And we're making it and creating it together. Oh, thank you so much, Jackie. Yes. I'm really curious about how people experiencing this trust, how they relate to our beautiful conversation today and what they can imagine next as they are consciously and trustfully stepping into that collective consciousness that we are truly in together. So thank you for today, Jackie, and I'm looking forward to more because I feel this is just the beginning and yeah, yes. I'm loving it and I'm trusting the unfolding. Thank you so much, Jackie, for being here today. Thank you.